Hi, and welcome to Beyond the Mist, the behind-the-scenes dungeon mastering podcast connected to the Mist World campaign. My name is Dan, I am the, the game master and the storyteller, and this is about episode one, the preparation of Winter to that. Now, the first thing I did before starting the campaign was to go to a website called Donjon, D-O-N-J-O-N, if you Google it, and from there there's got a whole range of randomized generators that you can use. Um, the, the ones that I tend to use, I generate a world map, you can set all kinds of things with your world map, but the, unfortunately at this point they're only really uh, fantasy ones. Um, so for the mist world one, I created a world map that was 90% ocean to represent the mist and the, the clouds in between, and showed a kind of scattered uh, uh, towns that would come along as well. I also create a list of likely NPCs that the characters will come across. Uh, I tend to refresh that every time we go into, so I've got at least a list of 10 uh, every time we go somewhere new. So that way, every time my characters decide they want to go to a new place, they ask me, who's in the tavern? Who's behind the counter? Who's walking the street? I've got a list of possibilities to go through. And uh, depending on the makeup of the town, I can, I'll can i generally pick that re the relevant race as well. And I'll also create a list of potential encounters for them to come across. Nothing big, nothing started out, but just if they decide to uh, kind of get off the rails a little bit and head to, in their own direction, I've got something that they can do or come across along the way. Uh, as I said in my first episode, remember to steal everything. And certainly this Dungeon website is an amazing website to incorporate into your planning. Um, now at this point I decided that the reason why the party are going to attack the dragon is because it's suspected of taking out the other Oracle class airships. Uh, I did at some point during the recording forget how many airships had been taken out, and I believe I flip-flopped between three and four, and have now settled on three. So just a reminder, when you are writing, giving out these facts to your uh, to your players, make sure you write some little facts like some facts like that down, because you might need to repeat it down the track. And even with me recording every one of our episodes, I still manage to make mistakes. Now, when I start campaigns, I, re I really prefer starting with an opening scene with the crew relaxed in some kind of home base. Now, depending on your campaign, in this case it was on board the airship, if you're doing a cyberpunk campaign, they might be in their, in their gang's hideout. If you're doing that they're traveling from one location to another, it might just be relaxing on their transport like a wagon. Um, I like doing this kind of opening scene with them. It, it allows the players to introduce their characters in a way that, that's relevant to their personalities. It lets you do some unimportant and not relevant uh, skill roles. So, for example, if somebody's saying that they're w working on repairing a piece of armor, they can do a relevant skill check. Won't affect it, they'd have it either way, but it just means that anybody who's new to the system you're playing at has an opportunity to kind of understand how the skill roles work while it, while it doesn't matter. Now... After that, I wanted to have an encounter, again, just a, an unimportant one, nobody was going to get hurt, but uh, but just a way to kind of let them flex their combat skills. Uh, this scene with the mechanical wagon run by goblins was directly stolen from a book called Prepared 2 by Cobalt Press. Uh, there's two of them, Prepared 1 and Prepared 2, I don't believe they could combat with the third just yet. If you haven't read these books, I really recommend checking them out as, as uh, Game Masters because each one has about 15 different one-shot encounters, not even one-shots, they're just scenes that can pop into any kind of campaign you want. And what's really great about them is even if you don't, um, even if you don't use the, the villain that they're willing to use, they often got environmental effects that affect how the game works. In this case, a mechanical wagon that can't be stopped until it's been destroyed, and it's zooming all around the map. Uh, in this case, heading straight foot towards the players. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes to, for Prepared 1 and Prepared 2. I believe I got mine from Humble Bundle. So if you keep an eye out on Humble Bundle for their RPG books, it's likely to pop up again. That Kerbal often have uh, books on, on that website. Now for the next scene, uh, when I had the, the players basically RP some of the senior members of the crew, for me this was basically a ripoff of Star Trek. You know, having the chief medical officer and having the captain and chief engineer standing around talking about the, the events of what happening and, ma and making plans for their next step. So before the game started, I said to my, I said to my players, we're going to have this scene, no stats, nothing to roll for, but it's a, a, where you guys might RP as some of the, the senior crew every now and then. Here's some suggested roles. If you guys want to make changes, we can make changes. But ideally, you'll be playing as your character's bosses. 
And it's really nice to have players who you can trust to kind of give that instruction to and they buy into it straight away. And hence why you have uh, a player who's got a large spider as a character. Stats don't matter, it's all flavour, but it lets them have a bit of fun as well outside of game rules without worrying about anything breaking. Uh, after that, they have the scene where the, the players all effectively share a dream. Uh, I've, I've done this as a mechanic a few times and always find it interesting that how, however many times I say, you don't, you, don't rem- you don't know if anybody else shared this team, this stream, or you only remember a small part of it, um, they always find a way to talk about it with each other afterwards. Just a little bit of metagaming that's just common to having that scene. Um, now, if that scene, uh, as I mentioned in the first episode, there is a touch of time travel coming up in this campaign in the future, not in this campaign, obviously. And so the idea being that this is potentially a fragment of conversation that they'll be having with an NPC down the track that's been somehow sent down through the, through the timeline. If it if it were all works the plan, it'll be a really interesting callback to have from, you know, episode one, he, here's a connection right back to the start from where you are now. If it doesn't happen, oh, it was just a weird scene that this didn't play out or... You know, you see it all the time in TV shows where they introduce something and it just doesn't come up again. And it's easy enough to ignore it if that's the case. You know, remember those high fives that you leave as you go, these little story hooks. If they don't go anywhere, they're just left hanging. But if you can manage to get them to to connect up with something down the track, they can be truly amazing. Now, the other one was one of their first solo encounter, you know, away from the crew, away from the captain, away from the safety of their large ship to be something with tentacles. Just a bit of a Lovecraftian callback. You know, I've mentioned before my my inspirations for, for Mistworld are Stranger Things and The Mist. Um, they all clearly have roots in Lovecraft themselves. And so I feel like you need to have something with tentacles. The fact that it devolved down the track into Squilk was not my doing, um, but that's the way it can be. Now, again, they end... Uh, this in a uh, town called Delonde. This was a town randomly generated by that donjon world map I mentioned it before. So when you create it, you can have the, set it, the options for it to create towns for you. And so it said, Delonde, City of Labyrinths. And I just kind of went, well, what's the, why would a town be called that in Mistworld? Well, clearly it's because there's a maze of caves underneath that people believe would lead down to the surface. And so there would be miners going around, potentially corrupted or in some way infected by the mist, as evidenced by their scarring. Um, and you can just have this little bit of world building, this little unique feature of this of this particular town, just generated by the random generator. I really don't like trying to come up with all this stuff myself, and when there are such amazing tools out there, uh, I'll include a link to Donjon as well. Um, I will also add that Donjon has tools not just for fantasy games like this one but again sci-fi cyberpunk specific set rule sets like alien and star wars i believe as well it's really worth keeping um as a shortcut but when you are doing some planning because at worst you'll come up with some ideas that you probably wouldn't have otherwise another randomized generator i use very often is fantasy name generator.com What's really great about that one is, again, it's not just for fantasy names like this world here. You can set it to pretty much any campaign setting, world setting that you can imagine, and it will come up with names, not just for characters, but places. It's where I got the name uh, for the Oracle class airships. That was the name of airships that they had. Um, And going from there. Now, speaking of their airship, another tiny bit of of foreshadowing, foreshadowing I threw in as well was the name of their ship, the Hope and Grace. Um, I don't know at this point if any of my players will ever pick up on this, but that's an anagram for Hag. And I just wanted to make this connection that they, from the point that they start on this journey, from the point that they have that dream, they are destined to meet these Elder Fae and have this encounter, get started on this mission, and we'll see where that ends up. I don't want to give away too much. Uh, of, of future ideas there, but I really like this the idea of of having this portent, this, and then if they never get it, that'll be fine. Um, but if they do get it, I'll be very really surprised that they suddenly realize the implications of what's happening in the background. Okay. 
that was my planning for episode one. I hope that you got something out of it. If you have any feedback, please send it through to us, and I wish you all a good night.